IBS, neuropathy, and headaches, all caused by medication. That's the story of my latest client who struggled with new symptoms after experiencing side effects from prescription medications. This story gets pretty wild, and you won't believe some of the things that happened to her, so stick around. Hi there, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari, a surgeon who specializes in reversing gut microbiome dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation. My technique for reversing symptoms in as little as six weeks has helped thousands of patients over the years and is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Method. And if you'd like to learn more, visit mgiclinic.com and request a discovery call. Now in this upcoming video, you'll meet one of my clients who developed irritable bowel syndrome, neuropathy, and headaches after being prescribed benzodiazepine medications. These medicines included Ativan and Clonazepam, which also caused her to be hospitalized in the psych ward with suicidal ideations and depression. She underwent electroshock therapy, endured stomach pain, nerve pain, headaches, and sleep problems. Once we started working with her, it became quickly apparent that most of these issues were exacerbated by her medications. Now, she's completely symptom-free, gaining weight, and able to tolerate most foods, including the ones she was previously sensitive to. And she was able to achieve all this using targeted microbiome therapies. So let's get started. Okay, I, I have a couple questions. Um, you've been doing this program now for several weeks, if not probably like we're at month two or so. And I wanted to see what were some of the positive benefits you've seen since joining the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic? Okay, do you want me to talk about what happened to me beforehand? Oh, yeah. Just go into whatever you want to talk about. It's fine. Yeah. Um, this is sort of a catharsis for me because I'm able to share for the first time carefully and publicly um, the trials and tribulations that I've been going through the past four years before joining the Mind Gut Clinic. Um, I had gastroenteritis and it was extremely severe. I didn't know what was going on, but um, I couldn't eat anything for a week. It was during the Christmas holidays four years ago, and I had no access to a doctor, and um, it was impossible to go to emergency because it was so clogged up with people waiting to see um, doctors for emergencies. And um, finally, after the holidays, um, my um, general practitioner uh, said that um, the best thing for me after trying a, a number of um, medications was to put me on Ativan, which is a uh, benzo. And um, as a result of being put on Ativan, I developed a very serious suicidal ideation. I'm uh, 74, and I know now that um, you don't give benzos to older people or younger people, and it's become one of those drugs that um, should not really be given to anyone, I believe. Well, um, I ended up in emergency, and from emergency, I ended up in the uh, psychiatric ward of the hospital. And um, that's all from Ativan, really, because you had never, throughout your life, never had problems with. I've never suffered. I've never, never suffered had depression, food. anxiety, or even. No, no, I'm ideation. extremely, I'm an extremely positive person. I was put on Ativan because um, it seemed to control the, the aches and pains that I was having and it gave me kind of a serene feeling. But of course, you have to take it again and again. Mm -hmm. And being addictive, it's impossible to get off of it. And so uh, in the psychiatric ward, um, because of my suicidal ideation, I was treated like a psychiatric patient. I was amongst um, drug dealers that were that, that, that have the choice of either going to prison or going to the psychiatric ward to get off their drugs, and also some people that were very, very ill. So it was certainly, I can say positively, it was certainly um, an interesting experience for me because uh, what happens is in a psychiatric ward that you completely lose power and you're treated like um, a, a non-person. Unfortunately, uh, what the psychiatric psychiatrist did was um, rather than taking me off of Ativan right away, he decided to try another benzo, and that was um, clonazepam. 
and that exacerbated my condition. I never found out from um, the doctor in the psychiatric ward or from any other doctor that clonazepam can cause this. It was actually my husband who was desperately searching online that discovered this. And so um, it takes a long time for clonazepam to get out of your system. So I was in and out of the psychiatric ward for, um, for, for three months. Wow. And finally, what they did was they put me in a coma or a semi-coma to get me off the clonazepam. That was only the uh, beginning. Um, while I was in the psychiatric ward, they were zapping with me with the um, ECTs, um, which I really, really did not need. Is that like um, electro, that's electro ther electroshock therapy, basically, right? Electric, yes, ele electroshock therapy. That's right. And I had um, 12 episodes of electric shock therapy uh, every, every one, one a week over the course of that period. So finally, I was uh, released. Um, they kept giving me the Minnesota test. And I said, this is ridiculous. Uh, you're giving me the same test over and over again. Don't you realize that I can I can just make up any answer that I want? But carefully, the psychiatrist or the assistant was ticking off. You know, um, I spent uh, ten days in isolation because um, I didn't. There were no private rooms in this hospital, and um, I shared a room with um, a woman who um, developed COVID. And after being in isolation, they gave me the Minnesota test, and I said, "Please, this is absurd." Of course, I'm depressed. Who wouldn't be after being in isolation for 10 days? They released me and I was kind of on my own um, trying to um, get off an, another drug, which um, I finally have been able to get off of with your help. But then I decided that I, I really had to find a way out of this because I was just not myself. I was totally uh, uh, confused. I wasn't able to concentrate. I felt like my body was just arguing with me and that um i was going to be like this for the rest of my wife my life what, what were some and, of uh, the symptoms you were dealing with because it wasn't just psychiatric right i mean you were dealing with a whole i was dealing with other... i was dealing with severe um uh, stomach pain right. um i was dealing with um this this terrible and now i know what it is it was neuropathy throughout my body mm -hmm. and uh furious headaches yeah, sleep sleep issues as well, right? Sleep problems. Yes, I, I would say that the three months that I spent in the hospital, um, I don't. Most of the time, I I seem to have been on my back sleeping. And all um, of these also, conditions, including the irritable bowel syndrome and all of these other symptoms you've had—the headaches, the neuropathy, the um, the sleep issues—all of these issues, they they started after these medications right i mean these weren't things that had existed prior to all this that's that, that that's right it was exacerbated by the by the medication but certainly the uh, inflammation of my body um mm -hmm. was a result of the ibs and and the, and the stomach aches and so it gave me temporary relief so i decided on my own um i should say in the large city where i live which will stay unnamed um there is only one ibs specialist and um, I was put on a waiting list and I was told that it would take me two years to see this person. So I tried on my own to see a gastroenterologist uh, um, privately. And um, one of them suggested to me that the only way that I could overcome this condition was by eating um, boiled bananas, including the banana peel. Yes, and also fasting um, uh, every few days. I did find on the on my, my own the FODMAP, and I did try FODMAP on my own, and it simply didn't work. So by the time I came to you, doctor, um, I was not I was hardly eating anything, and my weight, I'm usually 130, but my weight was down to about 113. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that it's been um, a blessing uh, having you as my doctor. Um, I found you um, online. And at first I was very suspicious of the fact that you weren't going to meet with me in person, but this was gonna happen online. And I was wrong because you have been incredibly attentive through um, uh, uh, meeting with me, um, 
quickly answering uh, any issues that I had. And um, you haven't left me. This We've been together for nearly three months now. And I um, just the other time that we spoke um, or, or that we emailed one another, or we do this through um, through through uh, what's it called text. Um, you to me, well, I don't think you should be taking um, that uh, new probiotic right away. We're going to wait until the fifth and the sixth min, min, fifth or sixth month. And I said, oh my goodness, he's going to be with me until I am until I am really uh, better. I just have to say that. Um, what I've learned from you is, um, number one, that I have to be attentive to my body. Number two, that you really have to watch the videos. You are a student of your body, and there's a lot that you must learn. And the documentation that you send, this is not a cursory document. It's something that you must read again and again and again. I'm not being facetious in order to um, digest. As a result of my um, experience with you thus far, I am now from 113 to 119 pounds, and the weight is going up. Um, I am I'm obediently following the diet that you've recommended, and uh, I'm at the point where every few weeks you are asking me to experiment by adding uh, one food or two foods, but not more than twice a week. So it takes persistence, it takes patience, it takes guidance, and um, I can now um, think clearly. Um, I am um, happy again. Um, I find that um, I'm not spaced out when I'm talking to people. And finally, some of the peripheral conditions that I had, including um, inflammation in my back uh, seems to have uh, subsided because the inflammation is not chasing throughout my body. What percentage so, of your symptoms would you say are resolved at this time? Um, I would say that um, about 80% um, of my systems, symptoms have been resolved, Good. but um, you That's are great. very... Um, <laughs> But you're very careful in terms of explaining to me that, um, you know, you have to be attentive to your gut. You have to take, in my case, milk of magnesia. You want to keep your gut relatively empty. You have to keep a food diary so you know what foods you can tolerate and what foods you can't. Occasionally what could happen is that a food that initially you couldn't tolerate, you can reintroduce. All right, later. Mm -hmm. And that's Later. the problem I see with a lot of these food sensitivity tests is um, there's a lot of false positives when people take them when they're inflamed. But on that list, there's a bunch of foods that people can tolerate. You just have to reintroduce them at a time when the body's not inflamed and people do just fine. Exactly. And um, what I also appreciate is that um, um, I, it was actually in our last call, you said to me, well, Lauren, I seem to have become your, your general practitioner because, and of course you're not, I mean, you're excessively busy. I see that you're wearing your surgical garb. Yeah. You probably were in, I'm sure you were in surgery this morning. Um, but it's true that uh, if you're having um, other difficulties, they may be associated uh, yeah. with, 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 with the IBS. And there was one day where you promised to get in touch with me and, um, you uh, texted me at five o'clock and you said, I'm just closing down my practice. Do you mind if I just um, contact you when I get home? And it was delightful because there you were, there you, you were um, babysitting, waiting for your wife to come home. <laughs> and there was the baby noises in the background. So yeah. it's, it's the, you've got, you have, you have the human touch. Yeah. You have well, the human touch and you have assistance. So I'm not bothering you. It's just with the necessary questions through text. Um, that your assistant uh, uh, emails me back or texts me back. I know that you prefer text. Yeah. Well, you've done exceptionally well, and I want to commend you for really um, internalizing a lot of the lessons. Um, most people, when they start this program, they get the onboarding process, as you know, is, can be a little bit overwhelming. You get all of these, these, fo these food 
these food suggestions, these diaries, these recipes, then you have a bunch of like supplements, then you have protocol things you got to review, you got to send us records, then you got to watch 15 videos um, about how to fix IBS naturally. And these are all just classic risk factor modification type things. But I would say most physicians ignore it in the sense that they don't have time to cover all these things. Very hard to cover all that. Info. There's a lot of information, right? And it used to be very challenging to do this in a traditional clinic setting when you just have about 15 minutes of face to face time with people. And, you know, you only see them every, you know, few months or whatever. And then you're in a rush, right? You're in a rush to just see patients. And um, I think this new format, at least for people, um, people who are suffering with infl inflammation, digestive dysfunction, even autoimmune disease, has been able to boil down what used to take almost a year, year and a half, has boiled it down to a matter of like weeks to months, right? I mean, you started feeling better almost immediately it was very i mean it's very fast and um so we see that typically and this process used to take a much longer it used to take much longer because of the transmission of information you know the the you know perfecting of the diet and the protocol the you know and then all obviously also the medical record reviews and things like that it, it's um we personalize in every single case we personalize it for each individual person but this process used to take a long time now with this new system, it's been um, been a lot better, faster. It's it's really it's really a substantial breakthrough. And what I tell myself is, in fact, the way that I'm eating is the way that our ancestors ate. Right. We're going back. We're going back to the basics. We're going back to um, uh, almost like when we were grazing. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 these are basic foods, and that and unfortunately, what's happened because. There's so many people <laughs> living on this planet that there have been um, some very dangerous shortcuts that yeah. um, producers are taking, and um, they, they are simply bad for us. And um, I was shocked. I had no idea what IBS um, was. And once I got it, and I mentioned it to some other people, it's rampant. It's rampant. It's and twenty five percent of the of the population. Some estimates they say it's like twenty. It's almost it's almost one in four people have some kind of irritable bowel syndrome presentations. And That's right. That it's so high in a developed country such as ours. Um, you wonder, right? It it must be the food. It must be the lifestyle. It must be a lot of these these things. That, and to echo what you said, the phytonutrient profile of foods have diminished considerably in modern diets and it's the number one nutritional deficiency now is not whether you've had enough carbs fats or proteins but if you've had enough phytonutrients and most people don't even know what a phytonutrient is so you know i gotta make all these videos explaining what things are explaining how the diet works explaining the philosophy behind this and um you know even presenting the data like a bunch of research papers on this topic I mean, this is this topic has gotten interest from big research universities. I've given lectures at uh, Stanford University and you know different medical colleges about these sort of things. It's it's getting a lot more interest because I think people are recognizing that the phytonutrient deficiency it's what's causing a lot of this chronic inflammation. It's what's causing the irritable bowel. It's what's causing the autoimmune disease. It's what's causing some of these other conditions, and it's very hard to treat those conditions. With a medication, it's very hard to treat this the condition with without addressing this deficiency. And so I think, um, and it's not there's no shortcut. Unfortunately, there's no like you know secret pill you can take. There are some. That's it. We 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 we've been taught that there that there is a secret pill, and that is just a matter of of um, one of the research institutes coming up with a secret pill. But that isn't going to, to work. I have to say that. Um, um, I used to be a, a research librarian before I became a professor. I'm now retired. And so I was really using my skills to find everything online through uh, med journals and so on. And um, you are ahead of the curve. You are definitely ahead of the curve because um, even the recent literature that I've come across is still more questions than, than answers. And yeah, I, up with answers. 
I agree. I think there's this big area of research uh, regarding the gut microbiome. And I would say that, you know, it's in, a lot of this is in the research phases. I'm already, I would say, in the application phase because I fixed this problem in, in virtually 100% of my clients. It's using targeted microbiome therapies that you don't need a prescription for, by the way, okay? But it's using targeted strains of bacteria which have certain um you know these things have they, they're, they're patented actually so they have, they've got these like very distinct characteristics that help the gut heal and to replace them in very large enough quantities and to know which ones to use at which time and the timing of it i think that is an art i don't think a lot of people know how to do it properly i think a lot of people do it um har do it with harm right i've seen a lot of people fail probiotics over the years and um you know that combined with the phytonutrient piece you know you, you fix these two and then you you address the sleep the stress and the exercise and you combine these all in a program where you're getting i mean it's like a three on one program you have like three coaches and you've got open mm -hmm. access to me and we're constantly you know we're texting like sometimes multiple times a day right just trying to That's perfect right. trying to That's troubleshoot right. things and customize things and i think people People deep down inside, they know that this is what it takes to get better. Because in traditional settings, it's, it's very hard, right? They're just being you know, told to do a test, told maybe something's not wrong or something is wrong. They're maybe being given like one or two supplements by a doctor and then it's the wrong thing. But there's no like cohesive kind of a strategy to fix these problems long term. And I think people are beginning to recognize that it, it will take a little bit of hard work. But if you have the right guidance and the right expertise um it's it, it's really helpful i have to say that i do appreciate uh, the the diet i've developed a certain rhythm and um it's kind of nice that i know what i'm having for breakfast what i'm having for lunch what i'm having for dinner and uh, it's really a, a huge variety of, of of fresh fruits and vegetables right and and uh, blueberries and uh, it's really taken the um, anxiety after uh, out of having to figure out what am I going to have for dinner every night or lunch. So that's that's my attitude. And uh, now with the new foods that um, you told me I can introduce, it's become a nearly normal diet. I know. That I'm not, People are surprised <laughs> that how, norm, how normal the diet is. You know, people are like, right. well, how restricted that's do I have to be? And I say, hold on. Listen, this is when you're inflamed, let's get you out of the inflammatory phase. Mm -hmm. and then let's start introducing all of the foods that you miss. You know, let's let's slowly introduce them and get you back to a normal diet, so to speak, you know, and um, it's just well, I'm very careful when I tell you at foods I'm missing that I don't say, well, you know, doctor, you're really missing those potato chips because oh, I know yeah. that is that is like a no-no. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you've been educated about the way some of these foods are produced, you end up making better food choices that do do not exacerbate things like IBS or autoimmune disease. And um, that's part of the edge. By, by the way, that's you know, the self-interested part of me, the reason I, I spend so much time asking people like, hey, look through the videos, look through the, the um, you know, the articles that I'm sending you, look through the, the paperwork I'm sending you is so that you get educated about these topics because I want you to be an expert and it, it take it offloads a lot of this burden for me, right? I don't become the referee anymore. You are in charge of your own health. You actually understand why certain things are good, are, are bad, how they work, how they plug into a greater model of things. And I think when you develop that working understanding, then the IBS just kind of becomes, it's it's gone because you, you understand how it works. You understand that it's first gut microbiome dysfunction, phytonutrient deficiency, right? You fix those two things. And then obviously in your case, medications, huge, huge, huge contributor, right? And then and then the other things sort of fall in place, the sleep, stress, exercise, all of these things tie into gut microbiome dysfunction and IBS. And um, to effectively address all of these requires a very holistic approach, I would say. It's also helped me understand some members of my family better. I'm sure <laughs> that my, my father had 
IBS. I know that my sister has a variation of IBS and my son has some um, has uh, IBS and I, I guess IBD. Right. And so I, I think that um, we have to recognize that there is some, as you say in your video, that there is a genetic component. Of course. And, uh, and not blame yourself for um, not taking care of yourself. It's, you know, I, in my case, I'm very fortunate that this didn't happen to me until I was um, 70 years old, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, great. So, I appreciate you uh, sharing your story, and I think this will probably help a lot of folks. Thank you very much. This has been fun. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. And if you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you think this video will help someone you know, be sure to repost a link to this video. And as always, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri with the MindGut Immunity Clinic, and let me know if I can help you out. Mm -hmm.